Unlike diesel engines, direct injection petrol engines cannot be operated with permanent excess air. You will start off by carrying out a short test drive, which will show you the different operating modes of a direct injection petrol engine. You will then move on to examine fuel combustion and its ignition capability in terms of the lambda air fuel ratio. It will become clear that a petrol powered engine can only be operated with excess air in stratified charge mode. A stratified charge can be achieved in a manner of ways, and this section examines three of the possible technical solutions, as well as comparing these solutions to homogeneous engine operation. Apart from the injection and ignition, engine operation is influenced by further factors too, namely fresh air, ducting, and the exhaust gas recirculation, which you will learn about at the end of this chapter. Depending on the power required, the direct injection petrol engine either works in the fuel-efficient economy mode or the performance-enhanced high-output mode. These operating modes are also referred to as the stratified charge and the homogeneous mode, as you will see here in the following descriptions of the combustion processes. When does the engine run in the economic stratified charge mode? And when does it run in the performance-enhanced homogeneous mode? Simply try it out for yourself and see. The pedal is depressed and released depending on the position of the cursor. See what happens to the operating mode display and the speedometer. The test drive lasts 60 seconds and also shows you the proportion of time spent in each of the operating modes. The more time you spend in stratified charge mode, the more economically you're running the engine. Here you can see the result of your test drive. You will have noticed that the engine can be operated in stratified charge mode up to a speed of about 3,000 revolutions a minute, depending on the current engine load. In this test, this corresponds to approximately 130 km per hour in top gear. Above this threshold, the engine is generally run in homogeneous mode. Why can't the engine be run in the economic stratified charge mode the whole time? A little background information is required to answer this question. A petrol and air mixture can only ignite within a certain fuel-to-air ratio. The ideal mixture ratio given by the chemical equation is termed lambda 1. This is also called a stoichiometric fuel-to-air ratio. The mixture is ignitable between lambda 0.6 and lambda 4. A rich mixture produces high power delivery. A lean mixture results in fuel-efficient operation because the excess air means that the fuel is able to burn completely. With the mixture at lambda 1, complete conversion in the catalytic converter of the pollutants is guaranteed. In older engines, particularly those designed for high power output, the mixture was often enriched. Most of today's engines equipped with a closed loop catalytic converter operate in the range of lambda 1. Lean burn engines, meanwhile, run on mixtures in the range from lambda 1.4 to 1.6. Effective reduction of fuel consumption requires engines to run on an extremely lean mixture, however, with lambda values as high as 3. Direct injection petrol engines attain this value in stratified charge mode. In homogeneous operation, the mixture ratio is set to around lambda 1. Why doesn't the direct injection petrol engine use the full ignitable range up to lambda 4? You must remember that ignition is not taking place under static conditions, but in an internal combustion engine operating at high speed. 
it would not be possible to ignite an extremely lean mixture reliably in the short time available. The result would be unstable engine running with combustion misfires. Even in the case of direct injection petrol engines operating at up to lambda 3, the fuel has to be injected in a special way to ensure that the mixture ignites reliably. Reliable ignition of the mixture requires a non-uniform or inhomogeneous mixture of petrol and air. This is also known as a stratified charge. The stratified charge is not produced until the compression stroke to ensure that there is no further mixing prior to ignition. Around the spark plug there must be a richer mixture that ignites reliably. The flame front this produces expands into the areas containing a lean mixture where the excess air ensures that combustion is as complete as possible. This shows two of the reasons why the stratified charge mode is so efficient. Firstly, there is the virtually complete combustion of the fuel with a high proportion of surplus air. Secondly, the flame only spreads to the area containing fuel. This means that it is separated from the wall of the cylinder by a layer of air. This layer of air provides thermal insulation for the flame. As a result, the flame stays hot, further enhancing the combustion process. The inhomogeneous distribution of the mixture can be achieved in a manner of ways. All these methods have in common, however, the point at which injection takes place, just before the end of the compression stroke. With jet-guided direct injection, the fuel is injected into the immediate vicinity of the spark plug. This requires extremely precise aiming of the fuel jet and furthermore places a high heat load on the spark plug. In the case of air-guided direct injection, the intake duct is shaped to produce a swirl flow in the intake air. Thanks to this flow, the injected fuel is selectively directed towards the spark plug. With wall-guided direct injection, the piston combustion cavity is shaped in such a way to produce a rolling airflow, which then directs the fuel to the spark plug. This is the method used in the M271DE engine. Around the spark plug, there's a rich mixture that ignites reliably. Further away from the center of the combustion chamber, the mixture is leaner so that it burns with excess air. Around the cylinder wall, the mixture consists almost entirely of air which prevents the flame from cooling down. In the power mode, a uniform fuel and air mixture with a lambda value of around 1 is required. This is known as a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixtures with a lambda value of around 1 will already be familiar to you from manifold injection engines. How can this type of mixture be produced when the fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber, however? That is not the right answer either. The fuel is injected during the intake stroke. The movement of the inflowing air and the time available allow the air and fuel to be mixed thoroughly. The geometry of the airflow and the positioning of both the spark plug and the injector are dictated by the injection method. The optimum design for this is affected by a cylinder head with two intake and two exhaust valves with the spark plug located in the center. The injector is directed towards the piston combustion cavity so that the fuel reaches the spark plug after it has been deflected. You're now familiar with both stratified charge and homogeneous engine operation. Select the right characteristics for each operating mode from the list shown here. That's not quite right either. Take a look at the solution shown here. Stratified charge mode is the economy mode. The petrol burns with excess air, making lambda greater than 1. To ensure reliable ignition, the mixture of petrol and air must be of a non-uniform composition. This is achieved by injecting the fuel during the compression stroke shortly before the mixture is ignited. Homogeneous mode is a performance-enhanced mode of operation. The ratio of petrol to air is more or less stoichiometric, meaning that lambda is approximately 1 so that the mixture of petrol and air in the combustion chamber has the required uniform composition. Injection takes place earlier, during the intake stroke.
Now let's take a look at the engine's air supply. As you already know, the power delivered by an engine with manifold injection depends on the quantity of air supplied, while the quantity of fuel injected is adjusted in relation to this. By adjusting the position of the accelerator pedal, the driver controls the position of the throttle valve. This valve narrows the size of the intake pipe's cross-section, producing flow resistance. At low engine loads, the throttle valve is only slightly open. At maximum load, the valve is fully open. The same principle applies to the direct injection engine when it's running in homogeneous mode. When in stratified charge mode, the engine's power delivery is determined primarily by the quantity of fuel injected in a similar fashion to diesel engines. The throttle valve is almost fully open. This is the third reason for the excellent fuel economy in stratified charge mode. Apart from the virtually complete combustion of the fuel with a high proportion of surplus air and the more favourable temperature pattern during combustion, the reduction of flow losses also plays an important role in the reduction of fuel consumption. An intake duct leads to each of the M271DE engine's intake valves. Only the swirl duct is open whenever the engine is running in stratified charge mode or at low power requirements in homogeneous mode. The narrow cross-section causes the air to flow at a high rate and produces the twisting movement that is needed in the combustion chamber. When high engine power is required, the swirl flap is opened and the engine draws in additional air through the charge duct. You just learned about the conditions which determine whether the swirl flap is open or closed. The swirl flap is permanently closed in stratified charge mode in order to produce the rolling movement of the air in the swirl duct. The swirl flap also remains closed when the engine is running in homogeneous mode in the lower power ranges in order to ensure efficient vortexing of air and fuel. The charge duct is only opened in the high power range in order to maintain sufficient cylinder charging. Because the valve times overlap, all engines feature internal exhaust gas recirculation. This means that the combusted mixture is drawn back through whichever exhaust valves are open where it is mixed with fresh air from the intake ducts. However, internal exhaust gas recirculation alone is not enough when the engine is running in stratified charge mode. For this reason, some of the exhaust gas from the M271DE engine passes through the exhaust gas recirculation line before being mixed in with the fresh air. As a result, exhaust gas can make up as much as 30% of the air intake. Why is this necessary when the engine is running in stratified charge mode? Well, if the proportion of fresh air was too high, the temperatures produced when the fuel combusted would be so high that the nitrogen and oxygen in the intake air would react with one another, producing large quantities of toxic exhaust gases in the form of nitrogen oxides. The exhaust rarefies the fuel-air mixture, thereby lowering the combustion temperature and reducing the formation of nitrogen oxides. You can learn more about nitrogen oxides in the next chapter. The quantity of exhaust gas is governed by the exhaust gas recirculation valve. On the M271DE engine, the exhaust gas recirculation valve is to be found at the front of the cylinder head. Let's summarize. After working through this chapter, you're now familiar with the two operating modes of direct injection petrol engines. The first of these is the economy mode, also known as the stratified charge mode whilst the second is the performance enhanced or homogeneous mode. In order to fully understand the different operating modes, you first examined what happens during the ignition and combustion of fuel. A rich mixture where there is an excess of fuel results in the greatest power delivery. A balanced ratio of fuel and air, which is also referred to as a stoichiometric ratio, ensures low pollutant levels during operation while a lean mixture with excess air is needed to improve economy. You also saw how the fuel is injected directly into the engine. When the engine is running in stratified charge mode, 
an inhomogeneous mixture is created, which is rich at the spark plug and lean in the rest of the combustion chamber. There are a number of methods for doing this which involve injecting the fuel or directing the air in a certain way. With the jet-guided method, the fuel is injected directly onto the spark plug. The air-guided method uses air swirls which are created back in the intake duct, while the wall-guided method makes use of the special shape of the piston combustion cavity. This last-mentioned method is the one used in the M271DE. You also took a look at injection when the engine is in homogeneous mode. Injection takes place earlier during the intake stroke in order to mix the fuel and air together thoroughly. The air supply of a direct injection petrol engine too features a number of peculiarities. For example, during homogeneous operation, a throttle valve restricts the air feed, while the air feed is de-restricted in stratified charge mode. The two intake ducts, the swirl duct and the charge duct, are also a special feature of the M271DE, although the charge duct is closed whenever the engine is running in stratified charge mode or only low power is required. Apart from this, the M271DE engine is also fitted with an external regulated exhaust gas recirculation line which helps to reduce the formation of nitrogen oxides.